China is slashing its growth forecast for the year at the National People's Congress as that Congress gets into full swing. Eunice Yoon is live in Beijing with us. And Eunice, uh, this was kind of hinted at yesterday. We knew this was coming. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, the Chinese premier also acknowledged that the uh, trade dispute with the U.S. was one of the challenges that faced the Chinese economy, but also said that this year was going to be a tough struggle. Now, these are the numbers that were in his State of the Union address. He said that the Beijing um, uh, GDP target is going to be lower in a range of 6 to 6.5 percent. CPI expected to be manageable at 3 percent. The economy is going to create 11 million new jobs. This is significant because it's down from the 30 13.6 million jobs that was created in 2018. The premier had said that job stability was going to guide policy. So the deficit to GDP ratio was raised to 2.8 percent. This is up from 2018 and it helps this to stabilize the economy. Now the budget's going to carve out two trillion yuan, about 2% of GDP for bigger tax cuts and lower fees. All of this is meant to try to help uh, companies here to survive the tougher times and not lay off people. Bank lending for SMEs is going to be a priority. And also the government said that it's greenlighting local bonds 59% more than last year to fund infrastructure. Now, what was also interesting about the report was what was missing from the report. There was no mention of Made in China 2025, which is a controversial program to turn China into a technology leader and has also raised eyebrows among its trading partners, including the United States. However, the third priority for 2019 is instead to promote high quality manufacturing and to strengthen technological innovation. So the language might be different, but the ambitions for Beijing are the same. Guys? Eunice, that absence of the Made in China plan, I mean, are people, are, are, are people on the street there noticing that and, and thinking, gosh, uh, President Xi's really caving to the U.S. here and, and the negotiation with the U.S. is going really badly, or is it a, a non-event and uh, the spin or the, or the framing of the whole trade talks being one that, uh, you know, China is winning this discussion? Well, I think on the streets, uh, people aren't necessarily relating it, but among um, academic circles, uh, there's definitely been, uh, well, people have definitely noticed that in a lot of the uh, various reports, either on a central government level or in the local level, they haven't been using the term made in China 2025. And I don't think it's necessarily a concession from China um, to the United States, but um, it's a way to downplay uh, the language uh, but the ambition certainly is there. Uh, when I was looking at this work report, and I also realized that um, I've been in China a long time because because I feel like I could date uh, the years here uh, based on what else is in the work report. But but when I looked at the work report this time, I thought it was really interesting that uh, there was no mention of Made in China 2025, and that instead uh, we saw different language, which is like advanced manufacturing or high quality manufacturing, which you're starting to see more and more in the state press as as well as in government papers to uh, just re, um, reconfigure and rephrase what has uh, continues to be one of the ambitions of China, and that is to be, of course, a technology leader. And Eunice, when we talk about some of those stimulus measures, the cutting of the reserve requirement ratio for banks, uh, boosting lending to small enterprises, some infrastructure, local government uh, bonds for infrastructure spend, is it fair to say that most of this stimulus is the sort of classic old China just turn the taps on even if it has long-term negative effects as opposed to, to the more structural well, reforms they were trying to pursue two or three years ago to boost the consumer? It's, that is um, a debate that is going on right here, uh, right now. I think that uh, there, are, there are several economists who say that this is targeted, that um, even in the speech today, that the premier is well aware of the, and the government is well aware of the dangers of some large stimulus. But uh, there are quite a few, and I, I feel like more and more economists who are worried that, um, that as the economy continues to slow down and as the, um, you know, the authorities here uh, continue to set targets targets for themselves for growth that uh, the the um, that there's going to be more of a, an inclination to continue to uh, do some of the old fashioned stimulus uh, that that uh, the government has said in the past and continues to say today has been very dangerous for this economy.